Hi, so this is Mathman, and in the last video we did an introduction to some ideas on algebra, and we're going to explore a little more into higher order functions and how their characteristics and and what they what they um, certain operations such as factoring mean uh, when we uh, when we talk about these functions. In particular, we're going to be looking at uh, quadratic functions or functions of the power of two. So let's get to it now. Yesterday, I gave a general formula, ax squared plus bx plus c, that's a general quadratic form, and we gave the quadratic formula for the solution. And when I was in college, we were just given this formula. For some reason, the professor, either he didn't know how to derive it or he didn't care to. But it involved a concept called factoring. And so let's take a look at what they mean. Now, if we have... If we have a situation like this, we can expand it out. We can say x times x is x squared. x times 7 is 7x. Minus 4 times x is minus 4x. And minus 4 times 7 is minus 28. And x squared, this is the the final form of this. We could say that these are the factors of this equation. And oftentimes, we're just given the equation, and we are given the problem of trying to find the factors. And the reason for that is that in this case, try to draw an xy coordinate. this all four quadrants this is zero y and x and we subdivide it I'm not being real precise, but it's close enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Something like that. And we can say that 
by looking at this factor that when x is 4 this is going to be let's write it over here x equals 4 this is 0 or when x x is negative 7 this function is going to be 0 again so it's 0 in two places 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 at that point and it's 0 at 1 2 3 4 and if we plot more points and we did a table we're gonna write the factors here x minus 4 times x plus 7 and if we created a table where x is 0, 1, 2, well, let's, x is minus, minus 9, minus 8, minus 7, 6, minus 5, and let's go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's see how these plot. This is minus 9 over here. So when x is minus 9, this f of x is 81 minus 27 minus 28 so that is 81 okay 28 27 is 15 55 81 minus 55 I believe that's 55 let's see just hang on a second 15 yes 55 okay so minus d5 7 that's 6 26 so it's way up here it's above this one two three four five six seven eight nine so it's off the chart it's when it's negative nine it's way up here and we know when it's negative seven it's zero so it's pretty steep and when it's minus five we have 25 minus 15 minus 28 so 28 and 15 that's 13 43 43 25 13 3 so that's 18 minus 18 so that's way down here that's way off the board down here at 1 2 3 4 5 way down off the board so we got a we got a parabola that goes up very steeply and it goes down and then it comes back up through here like this I'm not a very good drawer, so it's not very smooth. Parabolas are much smoother. 
There. Second order equations tend to plot more smoothly than what I'm doing. But you get the idea. I didn't pick the best example. Maybe what I should have done here is plotted a better function. Let's say let's erase this and make something like x minus 2 times x uh, plus 3 and that's equal to x squared plus x minus 6. So when x is 0, we have minus 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When x is 2, it's 0. When x is minus 3, it's 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's let's make this neater. Okay, and so x is minus. Let's try minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, which we did already. Uh, x is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so when x is minus 3, we have 9, minus 3, minus six, and that's zero, which we already did. Um, let's go minus four, minus four. So we got 16, minus four, minus six, that's six. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So up this way, One, two, three, four, five, six. It's somewhere around here because that wasn't a straight vertical. Okay. Minus three, minus two. So we have four minus two minus six. And that equals uh, minus eight and four. So it's minus four. So at minus 2, 1, 2, it's at 1, 2, 3, 4. So down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, down here. I probably should have gridded this out a little more nicely. Okay, minus 1, x is minus 1. So we got 1 minus 1 minus 6. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's see. That's uh, yeah, minus 6. So when, let's see, when, z, when x is minus 1, minus 1 squared, minus 1, minus 6. So that's 1, minus 1, minus 6. So that's the same value as down here. Let's see. And at 1, we've got 1 
plus 1, minus 6, that's at minus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Hmm, that's a really weird thing. All right. Minus 1 times 4. That's minus 4. Okay, so I don't know what I was doing. 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's at minus 1. Minus 2 is 0. Let's see, minus 2. Minus 2 is minus 4 times 1. So it's minus 4 at minus 2. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And x is minus 1. So we got minus 3 times 2. is minus 6. So, yeah, it's down here. And at 2, at x is 2, it's 0. x is 3 is 1 times 6. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. So, you can see now we got some points. And if we kind of connected them. We have a shape like that, a parabola. But what we see here, what the important point is that when you factor, when you have it in this form, it's hard to see where the zeros are. But when you factor it, you see exactly where the zeros are, where x is x is equal to 2 and x equals minus 3. This whole thing becomes 0. So, and in quadratic equations we're always going to have zeros. So what if we're given, let's say, 2x squared minus 4x plus 8 equals 0. What do we do with this? Well, first off, we can simplify it by dividing through by 2. And we got x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 0. And... <clears throat> Let's erase this thing. Try and fix that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, now let's take a look at this. Let's, factoring is kind of a guesswork and an art. And we have no value here. We realize that this, this function is the same as that because when we divide it through by 2, we ended up with this. And 
So these are equivalent forms, even though they look different. So let's try x plus 2 and x, well, how about x minus 2 and x minus 2 because 2 is 4 and we got that. Hmm. That's x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. So that's x squared minus 4x plus 4. So that doesn't give us what we want. But what if this was minus 1 and this was minus 4? Let's see. x squared minus 4x minus x plus 4. So that's x squared plus or minus Sorry. Oh, I dropped you guys. I didn't mean that. Okay. Let's see. I my screensaver's gone, so I'm gonna have to turn it back on again. Mm, come on. And why didn't it? This is strange. All right, there we go. So get this adjusted again after having knocked you off I apologize for that okay and we got most of the screen there okay so that doesn't that doesn't work either minus five there's some functions x plus four and that doesn't work that there are no factors that you can they're just not factorable so we have here x let's try well it's the change in signs that makes things different makes it difficult so if we had minus 1 and x plus 3, we'd have x squared minus x plus 3x minus 3, and that would be x squared plus 2x minus 3 and that's not right so if we did this plus and then minus that would be plus and that would be minus and then that would be minus 2x minus 3 and that still doesn't get us where we want so this may not be factorable this this equation may not be we may not be able to find a perfect factor for it so in that case we have the quadratic formula to solve for x but let's uh, let's uh, 
let's do something. Let's uh, look at that same equation again. x minus 2x plus 4 equals 0. Well, we can do what we could what we call square the function and that would be x uh, minus 1 times x minus 1 and that would give us x squared minus x minus x plus 1 and that would be equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1. So the only thing different from this and that one is a factor of 3. We'd have to add 3 to make that into the same equation. So what we do is we go x minus 1, x minus 1, plus 3 equals 0. And that's x minus 1 squared plus 3 equals 0. And we could always go x minus 1 squared equals minus 3. And that's the best we can do. Well, if we take the general form of the quadratic equation and use the same concept then of squaring, what we call squaring the equation, we can derive the quadratic formula. So if we go a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. Now, what we have to do is play around and find the factors that will be squared. So why don't we take a look at, we got everything in the first power, all the coefficients are first power, so they must be square root a x plus everything is plus so that's good plus b over 2 because there's no 2 in front of there and we're gonna put a square root of a there and let's see what that gives us square root of a x plus b on the 2 square root of a equals a x squared plus a times um, a times b over 2 square root of a so the square root of a's cancel and we got b over 2x and we have the same thing here so we have plus b on 2x and we have b squared over 4a and so that equals ax squared plus bx now we're getting close plus b squared on 4a but it's not quite the same because we don't have this term and we're missing that. So what we need to do is we need to take a square root of a x plus b on 2 square root of a squared minus b on 4a plus c equals 0. And then when we expand that out, we get the above equation exactly. So by finding a square 
and adding <coughs> and subtracting factors we have that equation so let's write that up there we have square root of a x plus b over 2 square root of a squared minus 4 uh, b squared I'm sorry that should have been b squared over 4 a plus c equals 0 well let's then take this square root of a x plus b on 2 square root of a squared equals and we add b squared over a on and subtract c on this side and do it the same thing on that side and we end up with b squared on 4 a minus c if we take the square root we have square root of a x plus b over 2 square root of a equals plus or minus square root of b squared over 4a minus c now that's getting to look closer and closer like our quadratic formula so we subtract this from that side and subtract it from the other side and we have square root of a x equals minus b on 2 square root of a plus minus b squared over 4a minus c and that's all under the square root sign all right we're getting even closer now we divide through by square root of a and that gives us a x equals minus b on 2 a plus or minus 1 on the square root of a b squared minus 4 a minus c but if we pull out minus 4 a from the square root we end up with x equals minus b on 2a plus or minus 1 on 2a square root of b squared minus 4ac and that's our formula that's our formula for the quadratic so there's no need to memorize it yeah you have to try and find the right terms to square and that could take a little bit of thought but you know looking at the terms and and what you have you see what you have to do to be able to to come up with the equivalent of this equation when expanded and then you just go through the motions of uh, expanding it out taking the square roots and coming up with the final form and so that's the derivation for the quadratic formula and that gives you for all equations the the uh, 
factors for every single quadratic equation. And not all of them are, are what you would call makes sense. So let's just make up an arbitrary 9x squared plus 12x minus 6 equals 0. Well, a equals 9, b equals 12, and c equals minus 6. So we have x is equal to minus 12 over 2 times 9 plus or minus 1 over 2 times 9 times the square root of b squared, so that's 12 squared, 144, minus 4ac times 9 times minus 6. So that becomes positive. So we have 24 and times 9, that's 36, 18, Uh, 18, 21, 216. So 216 plus 144 is 10, 6, 3. So that is x is equal to minus 12 over 18. We can reduce that. Plus or minus 1 over 18 square root of 360. And what do we have? Well, uh, 10 squared equals 100, 20 squared equals 400. So it's in between 10 and 20. So let's try 15 squared. We got 25, 7, 5, 25, or no, 5, I'm sorry, and 1, and that's 5, 12, 2, 225. That's not quite enough. Let's try 18, 18 squared. That's 64, that's 8, and 6 is 14, 8, and 1, 4, 12, 3, 24. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Let's take a look at 19. That's 81. 9, 17, 19, 1, 16, 3, 61. In fact, that's, that's pretty darn close. Let's just double check this. 19, that's 81, 9, 17, 9, 1, 16, 3, 61. So, it's just slightly under 19. It's something like 18.9 something. So let's just call it approximately 19. So x is equal to minus 12 on 18. plus or minus 19 over 18. So x has two answers. x is equal to um, 19 minus 12 is 7, 7 eighteenths. That's when this is, this function is zero, 
and x, whoops, x equals minus. We have a negative. So negative 12 and negative 19. So minus 12 and minus 19 is 11, 31. Minus 31, 18. And those are the two answers. And that would have been very difficult for us to find if we were playing around factoring. It would have been very difficult for us to find. Let's, uh, let's uh, just check the square root of 360 to see how close to 19 we are. Um, okay. 19. Now let's see. 360 square root. 18.97. So x was actually this square root. Square root of 360 was 18. Point nine seven, and when you round that up to two digits, we got nineteen. So we're we're pretty close using nineteen. So that's the utility of the quadratic formula. Unfortunately, there's no similar formula that can be derived for cubes. And so when you're factoring cubics, you really are, you really are guessing in the dark. And a cubic is basically, let's say, x minus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 3. And that would be equal to, well, try 1 to expand first. We have x squared, x squared, minus x, plus 2x, minus 2, times x minus 3, and that's actually x squared, minus, plus x, minus 2, times x minus 3, and then you multiply that again. So x cubed plus x squared plus minus 2x minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 6. And this is... Uh, that's x cubed. Sorry about that. And yeah, that's that's better. We have x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. That's the, that's the expanded form of these. And trying to find those factors is very difficult. So if you, we were starting out here, x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6, we would have a difficult time getting from here to there. But factoring isn't really all that it's cracked up to be. I mean, you don't use it that much in reality. And, you know, you can always find the zeros by working out something in a spreadsheet. In this case, x is 3, it's 0 at this function f of x 
f of x is equal to 0 at x equals 3 at x equals minus 2 or x equals 1 and like I say that would be even difficult even uh, the higher you get the more difficult it is to factor it, it, it really is and it's not something that you really use that much it, it's something that is an exercise that mathematicians give you they they make a, a lot of emphasis to it but it's basically guesswork except in the case of the quadratic formula uh, where quadratic equations we can factor them out and we can we can find the zeros using the quadratic formula so x equals minus b on 2a plus or minus 1 on 2a square root of b squared minus 4ac for any equation of order 2 this formula will give you the zeros they'll give you the values at which x is 0 always but you'll never be able to find the values without a lot of difficulty for higher order equations. It's all guesswork really and, and you can spend a lot of time just guessing. So why don't we take a look at a simple plot let's say we already did in a second order let's take a x cubed minus 2x equals 0 well this one we may be able to factor we've got x uh, times x squared minus 2 equals 0 so we have x is z this of f of x let's say this is f of x is equal to 0 when x is 0 um, and when x is plus 2 and x is minus 2 so we got three values of zero. And this is an easy function to factor because it's not complicated and all we have to do is pull an x out right up here and pull the x out and the factors come out. So This is the same as x plus 2 times x minus 2, and that's x squared plus 2x minus 2x uh, minus 4. But that's not the... I'm sorry, I was wrong. <laughs> the This is x plus square root of 2. There we go. x minus the square root of 2. And we have x squared minus square root of 2x plus square root of 2x plus minus 2. And I made a mistake before. I have to admit it. Again, that's the problem of trying to do these things on the fly. So f of x x equals 0 when x equals 0, x equals plus square root of 2, and x equals minus square root of 2. 
and that's that's these are the zeros so why don't we just plot this thing and see what it looks like let's uh, make an X Y coordinate system sorry about that little blunder there but at least it caught myself mathematicians and teachers make these kinds of errors all the time and a sharp student will keep an eye on a teacher and point it out in a classroom unfortunately don't have that situation with YouTube if I don't catch it my own mistake then it's there for posterity so sorry about that but it's an easy one to make a mistake because the two's right there and and noticing that I got a square here and it didn't matter if it's a plus or minus I just <coughs> quickly jumped to two so that was my mistake instead of square root of two so let's mark out our x one two three four five six one two three five six one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three. And hopefully that'll be enough. We know where our zeros are at x equals zero, x equals minus square root of two, x equals plus square root of two. And where's the square root of 2? So, hmm, if we go here, this distance, this is 1 and 1, and that distance there, that's a 45 degree angle, Okay, we put it right there, our point one, 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 and we have our 45 degree angle. This hypotenuse will be the square root, that's one and one, and this hypotenuse is the square root of two. And so if I arc it down, that would give us the distance along the number line. And that's, in fact, how the ancient Greeks found the square root of 2. But for us, we're going to use a calculator. I think the square root of 2 is something like 1.4. And we'll take a look at that real quick. I think it's 1.41, something like that. Um, square root of 2 is 1.41. Okay, so square root of 2 is 1.41. And this was not very precise. So 1.5 is there. 1.4 is here. It wasn't too bad, right? So our 0 is there. Also, our 0 is here. And our zero is there. So we got three zeros at x equals zero, x equals positive square root of two, and x equals. So we have go through the ax axis, the x axis three times. And so why don't we create a table and we will plot points and see if we can come up with a curve. So we have x equals, let's say, negative 3, 
negative 2, negative 1, uh, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's take a look at that. So, if we, if we have f of x in the table, which is x to the cube minus 2x, so if x is minus 3, we got minus minus 27. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, we got minus 27 um, plus 6, and that's it. Minus 27 plus 6, so that's minus 21. So, wow, that way off the chart. So it, it a very steep function. So at x equals 1, 2, 3, it's way down there. Way at the bottom, way down below this board goes. Okay. I don't know what that is. That's a y. Okay, so we got our zeros here. Let's try minus 2. So that is minus 8 minus, uh, let's see, negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4. So we got minus 4. So at x equals negative 2, we have minus 4. And this is, what did we say, minus 21? So it's very steep. Uh, x equals minus 1 is negative 1 plus 2 equals 1. So it goes above. Here, it goes above the x-axis. So at that point, sorry, at that point, it goes here, so we have minus 2 is minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2, so minus 2 is down here, okay, we're starting to get some kind of an idea of the shape, uh, 0 is 0, 1, we have 1 minus 2 equals minus 1. So at 1, we're down here. But then again, at 2, square root of 2, we're at 0. And at plus 2, we're at 8 minus 4 equals 4. So at 2, we're at 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's up here somewhere. So we have something like this. We have something that goes extremely steeply and then it curves quickly, goes through zero, curves quickly, and goes up to infinity. And that's kind of the kind of the curve. Uh, again, my artistic abilities are not so great, but that's kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like. We can't prove it definitively. We would have to plot every single point on the number line here to get a continuous curve. We're just doing this by um, inf inference. So uh, we're, we're looking at this curve here through inference. This was a good one. Um, and again, this is not atypical of third order equations. Uh, they're kind of interesting because they squiggle around like that. And you got three zeros often. And uh, let's try something in between. Uh, let's say something in between uh, 0 and 1. Let's try 0. 0.5. Okay, for x equals 1 half. Alright, so let's uh, try 
x equals one half. So we have one half cubed, which is equal to one half, one half times one half, and that's equal to one eighth. Okay, so that so when x is one half, f of x equals one eighth minus two times one half, and that's equal to one eighth minus one, and that is one eighth minus. Um, minus uh, nine, uh, let's say eight eighths, eighths, and that's equal to minus seven eighths. So the function is equal to minus seven eighths. And down here, when x is one half, you can see that it's somewhere down here close to minus one so we're, we're we're in the right neighborhood i bet you if we looked at minus one half we'd have um something like this we'd have negative one eighth minus uh two times minus one half and that's equal to minus one eighth plus one but we got to put them in the same one eighth plus eight eighths and we have seven eighths positive seven eighths and one half is right there and that's about seven eighths this is a crude scale so we're in the right ballpark and so we we have we have pretty good confidence that this is like this. Why I chose these being curved? Well, these are smooth and continuous functions, and nothing nothing changes angularly. It wouldn't look like that. Things change with a slow, continuous, curving movement. That's why these are called curves. And so that I'm taking pretty some pretty big liberties here and making these assumptions, but um, not until calculus can we prove this to be true. So <clears throat> we just have to accept it on faith. And we could also go to Excel, and we have the ability to go and plot as many numbers as we can in between, let's say, ranges between 5 and negative 5, and we, uh, we go um, 0.1 tenth, let's say 0.1 intervals, um, we would get a finer and finer uh, representation of the curve the smaller the intervals we go we can add uh, thousands of points between minus 5 and 5 and get a very clear representation of the curve and uh, so that's the advantage of some of the tools that we have today um, Excel uh, does allow us to do things that we didn't have the ability to do uh, before, let's say, spreadsheets were available. So anyway, let's say you're stuck on a desert island and you want to be able to do this yourself. You don't have power for your laptop. You can use these methods and be able to understand these curves. I'm not sure exactly in what context you might exactly need 
a cubic function, but at least you know that you would be able to calculate it out. Or even if you needed to calculate something out for the square root of 2, like the ancient Greeks did. And the ancient Greeks basically, they, they realized that using the Pythagorean theorem, whoops, using the Pythagorean theorem, you could get the exact solution on a number line of the of the values of things of square roots for, for example you know one on one and the hypotenuse for that this hypotenuse is the square root of two and then you just arc it down using, a, let's say, measured it out with a string and arc it down to the axis, and you have your value exactly. So this point would be the square root of 2. And again, when we took that, it was 1.41, blah, blah, blah. goes on forever. <laughs> well, I had stopped the camera and... In the process, I've, I forgot to start it, so we'll just have to redo this again, and uh, we'll just go back to where we, we were talking about the ancient Greeks. They didn't have calculators, they didn't have electronics, but they were able to get a very precise understanding of the square roots and this is how they did it we already saw how they applied the pythagorean theorem one two three four five six and if we go one two three four five okay so when our point is one on one so we have 1 with a height of 1. That's 1, 1. We have a 45 degree angle. And we know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared equals 1 plus 1 equals 2. So r equals the square root of 2. So that's the square root of 2. And what the ancient Greeks did, as I mentioned, was they measured out to this point with a string, and then they arced it down to the number line. And depending on how, how um, we could do it in quarters, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. Uh, we could divide it by eights. One eighth, two eighths, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eighths. Or we could do sixteenths. And the more we divide these things up, the more precisely we understand what that value is on the when we intercept the x-axis. And if we land somewhere, let's say uh, this was this was one, and this is two, and we landed somewhere uh, in here, we could interpolate between two points, and we could get a pretty high degree of precision of what that number would be, what that actual number would be. So now, uh, I just wanted to show you uh, an ingenious way how the uh, ancient Greeks uh, solved square roots, especially uh, the square roots of numbers that um, are not easy. For example, 9 is, is square root of 3, or the square of 3 
4 is the square of 2 and so on. But what if you have the square root of 2 or the square root of 3? But I've drawn here on the x and y axis are, are starting with uh, a right triangle um, with uh, side 1, x equals 1, and the height equals 1. That's a 45 degree angle. And the hypotenuse would be the square root of 2. And if you measure that hypotenuse and then bring that measurement along the x-axis, you have the exact value on the x-axis of the square root of 2. Now, however you've divided that up, how, how minutely you've divided the x-axis up into eighths or sixteenths or whatever, you can interpolate a very exacting answer for the square root. In fact, that, that line that you made is an exact value. The problem is uh, estimating what that value is, so you have to actually interpolate and um, you basically use then uh, as the base the hypotenuse, okay? So the hypotenuse 2 becomes the base of the next triangle. And then you go vertically up and bring your hypotenuse from 0 up to that point. And you see I've marked out the uh, x and y um, locations. So we have the square root of... Uh, we have 1 and 1, we have the square root of 2 and 1, we have the square root of 3 and 1, and the square root of 4, which happens to be 2 uh, and 1. And we're able uh, to uh, estimate the, the um, square roots uh, by measuring the hypotenuse and then taking that and, and extending that measurement along the x-axis. And we can do this infinitely. We can do this uh, forever. And uh, we can, using this method, find the square roots of numbers uh, infinitely. So I just wanted to present this neat uh, methodology uh, so that you have this. This is an additional tool. Um, you don't need a calculator, basically. I mean, if you know, uh, if you're ingenious enough, like the ancient Greeks, uh, they had to find methods to do these solutions uh, because their engineering required them to be able to find uh, these values and uh, they had to do it without calculators, without pens and pencils. They were just uh, able to scribe these things, let's say, in sand. That, that's how Archimedes did it. He inscribed uh, his figures in the sand. So I hope you found this, this video interesting. Uh, we built upon some of the concepts that we introduced in the earlier video, uh, Introduction to Algebra. Uh, we looked at higher order uh, functions. We looked at factoring uh, to some extent. And again, I, I will reiterate uh, factoring. Uh, they make a big deal about it in algebra. Uh, we haven't looked at any word problems yet. Maybe that's something that we can do in another video. But uh, we did look at uh, how to uh, graph uh, these, uh, these functions. And uh, we took a look at a um, third order function. Uh, and we graphed that. And it was pretty neat. Uh, second order functions always give you parabolas. First order uh, functions give you lines. <clears throat> and uh, so I think that at this point we'll call it quits. And I uh, hope you found some of these uh, methods uh, helpful, especially uh, the derivation of the quadratic formula, because uh, like I said, when I was introduced to that in college, the professor said, you, you memorize this formula. He wasn't going to show us 
how it was derived. And um, so, you know, that's that's not the way to, to go about um, learning things. Uh, learning things, learning is about thinking. And thinking, uh, that that's what this... Uh, this whole thing is about is to to come up with ways to find the solution to something uh, that uh, like uh, the square roots of numbers uh, the way the ancient Greeks did without any calculators or pens and papers to work with uh, they uh, Archimedes uh, used like I said uh, sand. Uh, in fact, uh, it, when when the Romans uh, conquered uh, Archimedes, I forget where he was listening, living at the time. Was it Sicily or somewhere? But anyway, they found him uh, uh, working out geometric problems on a beach, <laughs> and he was making uh, lines in the sand and. Actually, the Roman uh, leaders didn't want Archimedes uh, put to death because he was a renowned mathematician, even in his day, and uh, probably one of the greatest mathematicians that ever lived, among uh, Newton and Gauss and uh, and uh, Euler and uh, Riemann and uh, a number of others. Uh, I think. I think uh, Archimedes was the one that came closest to inventing calculus without actually um, having actually derived uh, the full theory of calculus, but he came awful close. Uh, and that was 2,000 years before Newton. So anyway, I don't want to jabber on too long. Uh, and until next time, uh, this is Math Man wishing you all well.